is, of course, you know by now, Irvin Santana has signed a one-year, $14 million contract with the Atlanta Braves. At least it's reported to be a $14.1 million contract. Alex Anthopoulos, general manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, um, joins us in the broadcast booth. Alex, I, I've got to ask you, how much of a setback is losing Irvin Santana? And I'm going to be blunt. Do you really believe this team can compete in the AL East with this rotation right now? I do, and I, and I understand the concerns, and um, obviously with well, the way it pitched last year. And clearly, look, we would have loved to have added a starter um, with respect to Santana. I think it's pretty obvious. It was all over the Internet. A um, few things that I could say, and I'm going to be very selective with my words. Okay. Um, you know, from what I was told, we couldn't compete with the NL. The National League is where he wanted to be. So it was not money. It was not years. So... Um, we couldn't compete with that. All that said, um, you th- did you think you had him signed at one point? I would say that's a great question to ask me, Jeff. And um, I would say that um, probably not going to talk about it <laughs> a whole lot. Um, you know, I know based on past speaking in general terms. You know, normally when things really leak around the Toronto Blue Jays to an extreme degree, they're normally done. Mm-hmm. Uh, rarely do you see us. I mean, we're in the rumors here and there, but sometimes when there's a ton of fire, that's only when things are done. So um, that's just a general statement that I'll, that, that I'll make. Um, but, um, yeah, from what we were told, uh, we couldn't compete with the with the uh, not, not, with the, being in the NL. He wanted to be in the NL. That's where he wanted to be. Um, Why not give him... I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Why not give him two years with a vesting third year, or you know, at a market val- a market rate, or one year with a sure. second year vesting at a market rate? Uh, my understanding is that he wanted a one year deal, reestablish himself, um, go out and obviously have a great year. Um, I can tell you, definitely was not the money. Uh, money was not a problem in terms of uh, us being competitive there and things like that. And um, you know, obviously, when this decision was made, I don't know how. I don't know when the decision was made that the National League was where he wanted to be, um, but um, I wonder if the National League became a little more appealing when guys got hurt. So mm. um, it is what it is. I wish everyone the best. Wish him the best. Um, would obviously would have liked to have had him, um, but it's you know we're in the American League, and if God doesn't want to be in the American League. There's anything that we we can do. Do you think you misplayed your hand during the off season? No, I don't think so. I don't think there was anything that... um, I mean, we were close to a trade. um, But other than that, no, from a free agent standpoint, no. Um, You can't. I mean, I don't think it would have changed anything. Let's say you take in the case of Santana. um, If a guy wants to be in the NL, he wants to be in the NL. We can't. I mean, there's. I don't think we could have gotten a division change done in time Mm -hmm. when the time free agency hit to uh, go to the commissioner's office to get us moved to the NL in time to uh, get an offer accepted. So um, I think we had... um, we believe we had the right price points on the players, and um, you know we weren't going to force a deal just for the sake of doing it. So um, I think, with respect to Irvin, you know he's got a one-year deal. I think that's what made sense for us, and um, ultimately he wanted to go to the NL. You were pretty clear. You wanted to improve the starting rotation. Uh, you were also pretty clear that at the end of last year that risk was going to play a role you mm-hmm. you were reevaluating how what exactly risk was for the Toronto Blue Jays but i guess my question and the question a lot of fans have is you've got that and i think people will, will people understand the reasoning behind that but then you couple in that there appears to be limitations on how long you can go with contracts people are automatically going to assume, Alex, you know this as well as I do, that if there's limitations on terms of contract, there's going to be limitations on how much money ownership is going to give you to spend. People always take two and two sure. and have it come out to four. And I guess they just, uh, can you compete and can you win with all those limitations? I mean, your predecessor used to say, you know what, part of the price cost of doing business in Toronto is you've got to pay more than other, other people because you're a less attractive market, essentially, than other teams. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, obviously, look, I think the world of JP and you know we obviously work together and we don't agree on on everything and that's fine um, learned a lot from him, have all the respect in the world for him um, I don't necessarily subscribe to that theory I think Toronto is very attractive overall I think at certain times I can understand for example if you pitch uh, there might be a you know I've had it before I remember I could talk about this now but years ago must have been three or four years ago four years ago um, 
John Garland signed with San Diego. And I remember just talking to his agent. He was very honest and candid, and that's what you want from a club standpoint. Just mentioned, look, I've got a chance to go to San Diego, much bigger ballpark, on a one-year deal, better chance to uh, help his market value going forward. It didn't have anything to do with Toronto, the market. Um, the division was certainly part of it. The ballpark certainly part of it. That goes without saying. Conversely, position players love being here um, because it's a great place to play. And, but I think overall from the city and the country, um, I think it's, it's a plus. I think players, when they get here, just go ask someone like Mark Burley, who hadn't spent a lot of time other than coming through once a year with the Chicago White Sox. But I think he loves the city. He loves being here. But if most players that are signing one-year deals, they're, especially at a young age, um, are clearly looking to reestablish themselves and get the long-term contract that all players do. So um, I think when you look back to the World Series years, uh, the players that were signing short-term deals were older, established guys, Winfield, Molitor, Steve, Jack Morris. Not, not Steve, I'm sorry. Jack Morris, Dave, Dave Stewart, um, guys like that. They, were, they had already, I think, made their money and gotten their long-term contracts, and they were looking for a place to win. So, um, you know, it's um, we've been able to sign free agents that hasn't, that hasn't been a problem before. You just don't want to make a deal for the sake of making a deal. Make a big splash. Everyone's excited if ultimately you don't believe in the acquisition long term. So you never got to the point where you said to JLU or whoever was representing uh, Irvin Santana, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you never got to the point where you actually said to them or the door was open to say to them, look, we'll give you two years, you know, whatever, a, a year plus investing option, wh whatever it is. You never got to that um, point. It, no, I mean... The way, obviously, there was a change in, in agency. He was with Irvin Santana, was with Proformance, um, and he left Proformance. And again, from this is from my understanding of it, uh, Jay Lou has gone off on his own and started his own his own agency. So Irvin Santana signed on with him, and Jay Lou was very specific that he wanted a one year deal. He wanted a one year deal. The player wanted a one year deal. Um, they reached out to us. And explain that they a one year deal is what they wanted to do. And, Did that and, change from when Bean was re uh, representing? I think him? earlier. I think it's fair to say that earlier in the off season. I know there was a lot of reports, um, especially early on. I mean, it's all over the internet. There's a lot of reports of uh, desires for a long term deal and certain dollar amounts. And you know, out of respect to those parties, I'm sure I'm not going to get into um, maybe what information or I had or was told about length and dollars. But I think it's I think it's accurate to say that you know there was least it was characterized as there was a desire for a longer term deal at a certain price and you know Jay would probably explain the same way that um, at a certain price it made sense to, for the player to bet on himself on a one year deal rather than a long term deal at lower dollars but you know, he'd obviously be the one and Irvin would be the one to talk to about, about that but from our standpoint we were told here currently that a one year deal is what he wanted to do. What happens when an agency splits like that and, and in the middle of a negotiation? I mean you literally go from talking to one guy about Irvin Santana to another guy. How, how, how often does that happen? Uh, not very often, especially in an off-season. Right. You don't see it happen. Normally, players switch, players switch agencies all the time. That's very common in our game. You know, the fans and the media don't necessarily know it. Um, sometimes it's written about on the Internet. For the most part, it's pretty common. It's not, uh, it's not anything new or anything alarming. Most times it happens uh, spring training, off-season, early. Um, but you you rarely see it happen in the midst of free agency is probably the best way to do it. But players change all all the time. But I don't know that it's happened too many times where someone's changed in the middle of free agency. You guys went all in last year, obviously, and now people are going to look at an off season where, you know, with all due respect, fans are going to think you spun your wheels for the most part. You sure. probably don't feel that way, sure. but but fans will look at it that way. Um, and in some ways, I kind of see it that way as well. But uh, what changed, Alex, between going sure. all into well, you know, well, yeah, I think we didn't go into last off season, uh, meaning the 2012, 2013 off season with, um, you know, I'm not into the the all in term. Okay. Uh, and, and I, but I understand it. Yeah. When we make the acquisitions we made and we added the payroll we did, I completely so I don't shy away from that. I don't necessarily believe in it just because um, I don't believe the organization just stops and you know you do something for a year or two and then it just stops. You're obviously trying to keep it uh, going in a continual basis at that time. You know, we had some deals that presented themselves. If they did present themselves, we wouldn't have done them. So um, there's always opportunities to do to do things and sometimes it doesn't you know, players aren't a fit for your ballpark, for your division, things like that. So we were pretty active in terms of dialogue, like we always are, but there wasn't anything that presented itself that we felt made sense. So there were multiple deals that we could have made that would have brought in some names and people would have been excited. Um, 
but ultimately I think it would have um, shown that they weren't the right acquisition. So I understand it's been quiet uh, from a sense of player ac acquisition standpoint, um, but we do have some guys that are coming back that we think are going to help. Getting Cabrera back to full health, that he, looked, he looks much different than he did at the end of the last year. Getting a guy like Drew back who looks outstanding right, right now and is an added starter I think is important. And even just getting a, a, guy, a guy like Brandon back on the mound is a big add as, as well. So that, that being said, it doesn't mean that conversations stop. And we don't have dialogue continuously in March, past opening day, trades, things like that. The free agent market is what it is. Uh, there's really no other starters left that can have an Im impact. Um, but the trade, have, trade's still out there. I was going to say, but y y your strength, your, your two strengths in this team are clearly the bullpen. And you're right, Melky Cabrera's look great. This lineup, I think, should be really good. Sure. Would you pull one of those commodities out to get a starting pitcher? Sure, we certainly would, and we definitely explored doing that. Um, in the offseason, off just things didn't, didn't present themselves and they didn't work out. But um, no, I think a big part of what we did as well is, you know, we realized... You know, the opportunity to have guys like Batista and Carnacion, and even going into last year, Brandon Morrill looked like he was uh, rounding into all-star form with a sub-3 RA, and you realize you only have so many opportunities to win with those players, especially you know, the core of our team, you know, with guys like Batista and Encarnacion, we have them un under control. They're in their early, they're 31, 32, th 33. Um, you know, we didn't, we fell into those players, being completely candid. Jose Batista, sure, we signed him, and I think our scouts and development staff uh, deserve credit for being able to get the most out of him, but we didn't expect that. Edwin Encarnacion, we had belief in him. We kept bringing him back, um, but he emerged to be a superstar player. Being, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I think I'm stating the obvious. So all of a sudden, you start developing a core that when I started in 2010, Batista wasn't going to be part of that core, and it was going to be young, draft and develop, and take a long-term view. But the, the time frame changed. You got Colby Rasmus with a few years of control left and so on. You, you now and they even getting a guy like Reyes. So um, there's definitely a sentiment to try to move it forward, but it has to make sense as well. So can we do a bunch of, a bunch of moves um, to get some players? But if we don't feel they're going to be productive for us, it's not going to do us any good. Will you have failed if you go north with the starting rotation right now? Yeah, I, I don't see it that way. Um, and again, I understand, look, we wanted to add, but I think it's. I think the caveat to that is it's, n it's not ever just to add at all costs. Um, <clears throat> when you get asked, you know, what do you want to do with the team? What would you like to add? Clearly, we wanted to add to the rotation based on the results la last year. You know, Drew right now looks like he's got a very good chance to make this team. He's not there yet, but he's performing very, very well. Um, and that's a starter that we didn't have la last year. Morrow, we didn't have him last year. Um, so uh, those are two starters. All that said, we would have loved to have added more starters and have a guy like Drew come out in spring training, throw great, and be able to option him and just have him as your sixth starter, have that kind of depth. But if it didn't present itself, um, we still felt like we had some internal options that could really surprise for us. Do you feel that you, this front office, and the manager, that you guys are really under more pressure this year than you were any other year, that you need a... I mean, essentially that you need a good start and a good sure. year to keep your job. Basically. Oh, yeah, and I, I understand that as well. That's sports. I don't, and that's not lip service. I think because that comes from um, the ownership and management and obviously the people I report to, Paul, and so on. So you put pressure on yourself regardless, day in and day out, to win games. Um, you can't be in these jobs or in this line, line of work and um, spend the time. It's not a it's a way of life. It's mm -hmm. not really a job. So. Um, you, li you live and die all the time with every pitch and y every play. So, but I understand with the with uh, the moves we made last off season, the results we had on on, on the field. Um, you know, I don't get caught up in um, you know talk radio or media things. You should. Like it's that. good. I know exactly because I know that it'll it'll you should probably go on impact Twitter. me. You exactly. should go on Twitter. I would love it probably, but I know it'll probably impact me one way or the other. Anyone that says that it it whether you're a player or anybody else, I don't think anyone likes to uh, you know. To be criticized and so on, but I understand full well that's part of the game. So, and the only way that stops is if you win games. So, um, I'm not trying to make light of it or mm -hmm. say that it's, it's not important. It is important, but you know that you have a job to do, and you have to do it obviously to uh, you know the be best of your abilities and what you see fit for the for the ball club. And um, you know, I don't think that changes. And I, I think expectations, things like that, that's all part of the job. We want, we're not here to, to not win games and not compete and so on. So um, I think the Indians the last year, no one expected a lot out of them, and they had some guys step up in that rotation. Justin Masterson bounced back, Baldo Jimenez bounced back, Ka Kazmir had a great year for them, so they had some guys really emerge. Um, I'm actually pretty excited to see R R uh, Romero today. 
um, just because the second inning of his last game was we hadn't seen that in two years from him. Mm. So I'm curious, has he found something? Or was it just a, an unbelievable inning from him? But he's been working a lot on his arm at action and doing towel drills and trying to emulate a little bit of you know Johan Santana, Cliff Lee a little bit. And um, the second inning of uh, his last appearance stuff was electric. We hadn't seen that in two years from him. So I'll be very curious to see if it carries over now with all the work that he's that he's done. Before we let you go, um, Alex Anthopoulos joining us on the Jeff Blair Show. Uh, you had a lot of guys in this team that were sending emails and text messages to Irvin and. You know the infamous picture group sure. picture. Do you have to talk to this clubhouse, or do you have to? Do, do you feel that you've maybe lost a little bit of no, uh, I think it's, of, of faith? The no, players have lost actually, a bit of faith in you. No, I think it's actually the opposite. Um, I think the players all um, were well aware of how everything transpired. So I think it's actually the opposite. I think the players, um, you know, again, like you said, he had Irvin Santana. From my understanding, had a lot of relationships. Mm -hmm. With players on this team, so um, I think it's actually the opposite. I think, and you know, I think the players would tell you that as well. Um, they um, they were they were unbelievable throughout the pro the pro process of just obviously you know they wanted them here, and um, I think they'd be the first ones to tell you that um, we can't compete with the NL. Just we can't compete with the division, but there wasn't anything else that um, we could have done. Um, so and probably should stop saying a whole lot more before I say something that ends up sparking something.